Hello, my name is Danielle Kuhlman, and I play the French horn in the Seattle Symphony. Thanks for being here today to meet the horn. The French horn is a member of the brass family, and that also includes trumpet, trombone, and tuba, who I hope you met last week. Now the French horn has a few different parts. Like all brass instruments, we all have a mouthpiece. Now the French horn mouthpiece is very small, as you can see, there's a close-up. And we buzz our lips together like this. And then we can play into the mouthpiece. And we can put that into this skinny part here called the lead pipe. And we can play. Very exciting. Now you'll see how the French horn starts very small up here. And as it curls around and around and around, the tubes get bigger and bigger until they flare out here at the end in what we call the bell, because it kind of looks like a ringing bell. So that is how a French horn is put together. Now, one thing that brass instruments can all do that's really cool is play something called the harmonic series. The harmonic series is a pattern of notes that you can play using just your air and your mouth. You don't have to push down any buttons and you can get all kinds of different notes. I will play one pattern for you now. So cool. And if I add another key, push down another key, lower and higher, but we always play that same pattern called the harmonic series. Pretty cool. So you may recognize the horn from the movies or maybe something that sounds like this. You may have heard that on somebody's ringtone, uh, but it's kind of a hunting call. The French horn does these hunting calls so well because the ancestor of the French horn was actually a hunting horn. And they would take these horns out into the forest and they would blow them super loud and everyone could hear them for miles. And they would be able to signal different parts of the hunt and all those fun things they do in the forest. So that's the ancestor of this horn. And so a lot of the music that you hear written for the French horn still has that kind of hunting call flair to it. So the piece you heard at the very beginning, I'm going to play a little bit more of that for you now, is Mozart's Fourth Horn Concerto. And this piece really gives you that galloping French horn hunting call sound from the forest. <laughs> hunting calls, it also often plays with very sweet and lyrical melodies. So this piece I'm going to play for you is called Nocturno by Franz Strauss, and it's almost a bit of a lullaby to put you to sleep.
the orchestra, the horn player does more than just playing fanfares and beautiful melodies. We often end up portraying different characters in orchestral works. Because the French horn has such a big range and such an exciting range of colors, people will often give the leading role to the French horns. So you might hear the French horn playing the role of the hero, like we hear in Ein Heldenleben. Or you might hear something a little more mischievous, like Till Eulenspiegel's Merry Pranks. we also hear the horns playing beautiful lyrical solos. So we're often given those romantic melodies that you hear in the movies, or for example in this next excerpt by Mendelssohn from his Midsummer Night's Dream, it's again kind of a lullaby, a nocturne, meant to put you to sleep. until I finally found the right one. So sometimes you just gotta keep trying until you find one you really love. And I remember my very first audition was for the Seattle Youth Symphony Orchestras. And I sat in the room by myself and played this solo that I'm gonna share with you now. It's the beautiful tune, Green Sleeves. And I remember it so well because the top note in this piece was the highest note I could play at the time. And now I can play so much higher. So it's really fun for me to remember where I started.
started, and I've been playing French horn now for about 25 years, and I've probably practiced just about every single day of those years. So you can imagine I put in a lot of work and a lot of hours. And that hard work pays off. And now I can play music that's a lot more technically exciting than what you just heard. So I want to play something really fun for you, just a short part of a piece called From the Canyons to the Stars. And just like some of the other music that I played for you today, you're going to hear the horn portraying different characters. In this piece, you hear some different animal sounds. So just like in the famous Peter and the Wolf that you may have seen or heard, the French horn plays the wolf, right? And in this piece, you're going to hear the French horn doing the sound of some howling coyotes, and you're going to hear some bird songs and bird, bird calls as well. take the chance to answer some frequently asked questions since we can't all be here together to ask the questions. Um, I'm going to tell you some of the questions that I get most often on the French horn. The most asked question, and you may have not been able to see this very well from this video, but the biggest question is why is my hand in the bell? So when I play, my hand is always in the bell. And that's because the hand is almost like an extension of the instrument. It helps the instrument stay in tune, stay balanced with a really nice sound. Um, that's how the horn was designed. It also helps us to hold it up. And it also is there in case we want to make some of those cool sound effects like you heard in that last piece. I can actually cover the opening with my hand and make this really cool sound. So it makes for some fun sound effects. Another question is, do they make French horns in a smaller size for people in fifth and sixth grade band? Um, most French horns, they're all the same size. However, you can get a single horn, which is what most people start out on. And what that means is it has three keys like this, and it only has one set of tubes here instead of the two that I have. My horn is called a double horn. It also has a thumb valve for that extra set of tubes. They even make a triple horn that has three sets of tubes. But the single horn is a little bit lighter, a little bit easy to carry, and so that's what you usually start out on as a student. Um, also, does the horn come apart? That um, answers the next question. So making it easier to carry, the horn is kind of an odd shape, and so to carry it on the airplane and things like that, the bell actually twists off like this, and comes apart. And then you can stack it like that and carry it around much easier. And also it makes a pretty cool hat. So the other question I have here is, are there different metals for different horns? Now that's a really good question. In fact, on my horn alone, you'll see a whole bunch of different types of metals already. So my horn is quite golden colored. Unfortunately, it's not gold, it's brass. So we have yellow brass here, we have a rose brass up here. You can see it's a little bit darker in color. And then you'll see here some of my um, fixins here, my keys and other parts of my horn here are made of nickel silver. So sometimes you'll see a whole horn that's made out of nickel silver or a whole horn made out of brass. And that's just, um, so you have lots of different options for different tone colors, whatever your preference is. Even on my mouthpiece here, you'll see I actually, the rim here, it's plated with solid gold. Very exciting. Um, before we say goodbye today, um, I wanted to share one more little ditty with you. 
Feel free to sing and dance along if you want. It's a popular one you might know. My favorite things from The Sound of Music. Thanks for being here and learning a little bit about the French horn and meeting me and saying hi. <laughs> from the Seattle Symphony's Education and Community Engagement Team. I hope you enjoyed Danielle's video today all about the French horn. I'm here to help you make your very own French horn at home. Parents, there's a link to the template and the instructions below. Feel free to pause the video, and when you're ready, I'll be here to help you put your French horn together. Let's make a French horn. Here's mine. Start by printing the French horn templates. Then find something to color your French horn. Next, ask your adult helper to help you measure your ribbon or yarn. Measure your ribbon or yarn to be six feet long. Then ask your helper to cut it. Now you'll need some tape to put your French horn together. It's time to color your French horn. In the orchestra, the French horn's tubes all twist together to make this shape, but if you stretch them long into one long line, it would be 12 feet long. Our French horn on this page is only half the size of the French horn in the orchestra, so we are going to use six feet of tubing to make ours. Take your tubing and tape it to the mouthpiece. Then tape as you go, twisting and turning your tubing to fit inside the shape of the French horn. And there you have it, your very own French horn with handcrafted tubes. Hope you have fun making your French horn and we'll see you next time for more instrument crafts. <laughs>